Hi, I'm Tom Burgess, and thank you for listening to the Profit for Purpose series from the Real Agenda Network of Podcasts for Political Change. Now, in this series, we talk to inspiring business leaders about how we can build a sustainable economy that works for all. Now, in this second episode in our three-part series with Julian Richer, founder of the home entertainment retailer Richer Sounds, today we're going to be talking about tax, trust and transparency. Now, in the USA, there's a group called the Patriotic Millionaires who lobby the government to recommend increasing taxes on the wealthy. Now, to me and many others, this seems absolutely right that wealth is taxed. After all, we all help create the wealth, but our current system means that it's only accumulated by a few. So taxing wealth is a way of putting back into the community what we help to create. This form of taxation is unlikely to cause any hardship and yet could fund the infrastructure and the public services so that the less fortunate have a decent standard of living and at the same time give a big boost to the economy. There's a really strong business case to tax wealth more. So I started by asking Julian how we could do this and how we can get the wealthy and business leaders to support the taxation of wealth and how we can press for change. I recently read about the Business Round Table and they were saying how business have debt to society as I was talking about. And then when you looked into it, there were 160, 180 companies in there that signed. Uh, 21 of them hadn't paid a penny in federal income tax, which is our corporation tax, not a penny. And like, come on, Let's be honest here. Now, they might be good in different ways, but that was pretty misleading, and therefore it just seemed a bit of a puff piece to me. Patriotic millionaires, I thought, similar sort of thing. I mean, I've got to say that I think this is of the moment. I do think the timing's right for this. A lot of billionaires are waking up with a social conscience in the morning saying, actually, we should do something about this. Maybe I've got too much, or maybe it's not fair in this world of rising inequality. So I think that's a good thing. Yeah. So prompted by Piketty, is, you know, which, which was widely read, which said the gap, as I'm sure you know, the gap in wealth is getting bigger and bigger, uh, whereas incomes aren't. So what do we do about it? So do you remember Davos, this guy, Rutger Bregman, went there and he threw the cat amongst the pigeons. He said, it's taxes, taxes, taxes. Stop sitting here talking about philanthropy and your 100 private jets that have flown in. It's about taxation. And I think taxes, taxation is very, very key. So if we're looking at UK, the UK problem in inverted commas, what do we do about taxes? And I can give you a list of things I think we should do. Please do. What I think we need to do about taxes in this country First of all, we've got to simplify the tax code. We have 17,000 pages of tax, apparently. We have 1,000 allowances. It's insane. And it's just been, it's like putting 1,000 layers of wallpaper on your wall. You just wouldn't do that. We need to strip it back and start again. That's the first thing. Secondly, we need to give the HMRC more resource. So for every uh, pound they spend, they get a minimum of five quid back. They're all different. You know, I've heard you, they get 97 quid back, someone said. So who knows what they get back, but it's hugely efficient. So why have we cut their budget? Since 2006, they had 104,000 staff, they're down to 60,000. Well, you know, if, if you knew you were going to get five quid back for every pound you invested, you'd empty your pockets out, wouldn't you? You wouldn't say, well, I'll give you less money then. I mean, it's insane. So they need more resource. The third thing, we should make their agreements transparent. You know, we only heard about the Vodafone deal that they struck, you know, through a whistleblower. It was supposed to be between six and seven billion. They got away with a billion and a half. Well, that, that isn't right either. And fourthly, they need more ministerial accountability and oversight because apparently they're allowed to do pretty much what they want. But actually, they're managing our cash. It's like, I want the bank manager to be accountable to me. Thank you very much as a taxpayer. So they're four things I do straight away. Fifthly, we're sitting in this very nice but small flat in Mayfair. There are five and a half thousand properties in Mayfair. 50% of them are owned offshore. Okay, that is wrong. I do not want filthy money coming to this country. I want to know where the money is coming from. Surely we don't want money at any cost. You know, gangsters, money, corrupt regimes, we do not want it. And a lot of them are people who are nicking cash out of this country and bringing it back in again. So I want trust to be visible and transparent. Okay, absolutely. And I think David Cameron's acknowledged this and was going to do something about it, and he got distracted by Brexit, I think. But um, um, we've we got to do something about that. Do we not agree that land businesses and probably you can bring your cash in there. We want to know where it's come from. Right? Surely it can't be the end of the world to have it audited by the KPMG in wherever you, your business is or whatever. Okay, so number six, inheritance tax. So the big landed families, aristocratic families, of which we're in, in Mayfair now and by Duke of Westminster largely, they, they have their land in trust. And therefore when they die, the trust still owns it and they have a much more favourable inheritance tax regime. The entire country pays six billion in inheritance tax each year. Now, 
arguably, if, if, if the Duke of Westminster was all in his name and had to pay tax on it, that would be about six billion, I was told, uh, which he's not having to pay. Is that fair? I don't think so. We need a more equi equitable inheritance tax regime. So I don't know, that's number six, is it? Mm -hmm. So number seven, uh, profit shifting. So the OECD have been faffing about trying to come up with a scheme, to, and they haven't. So you know the time will come when unilaterally we have to say to business in this country, they're taxed on the turnover they do as a percentage of their profits worldwide. So number eight, accountancy firms should be culpable. So if you recommend a dodgy scheme for me, to me that, that you know the revenue you don't like and subsequently you know, deemed to be cheeky and not acceptable, you know, to the moving of the goalposts, then you should you should take some pain as the accountancy firm, because the moment they get away with these, they make a fortune from these schemes uh, uh, and get away with it. Oh, uh, tax registers. So in Scandinavia, they, um, in Norway and Sweden, they publish people's tax returns online. I mean, why would anyone have a problem with that? OK, if I pay a lot of tax, you might think, well, he's making a lot of money, but yeah, but I'm paying for the hospitals. You know, there's that. We should be proud of that. So I think that's really, really important. Uh, number 10 is, is, is not so much improving the tax code, but looking at the way we tax in terms of uh, this unearned. So we, we charge people much more tax on their earned income than unearned income, and that's just leading to more and more inequality. So I think we de desperately need to ad address that balance. And you could also look at council tax, is council tax, where um, you can pay very little more for a mansion than someone pays in a, in a much smaller property. We need to spread the bands. It's a very easy thing to do. People talk about wealth taxes and, and on property taxes is very difficult and a lot of admin and red tape and valuing every property in the country I think it's tricky I'm not saying we should never do it but the really easy way to claw in billions of pounds it always used to be back in the days of rates yep. it was the, the tenants didn't pay it was always the landowners right. and of course they, they were the people that benefited from the uplift exactly in the value we and, yet we, and we have to yet we're now still asking Tenants, tenants to pay, no, and it's couldn't agree with you more. ruined the lives of couldn't people with on no income. Couldn't agree with you more. So yes, then you'd look at business rates, and a lot of a lot of sour retailers complaining about big e-tailers who set up a warehouse in the middle of nowhere and aren't paying much rates. That's a slightly self-serving argument. I mean, I have I pay rates as a retailer, but I don't pay much because I've got secondary positions and my shops are small. And you know, just like I didn't sign lots of leases, and now complaining about the leases I've signed. Yeah. So anyway, that's my summary of the ten. Good. And uh, that's what I. That's. Do you agree with that? They're my quick fixes. I absolutely do. And I, what do you think about? We've talked about those tax changes. What do you think about taxes on wealth? People with personal assets of over X would be paying a certain percentage okay. back in as a way for people to to who, who have that wealth, who built the wealth because of. The, the infrastructure and all the other things in yeah. the country, it's a way of reinvesting in so, the in nation. Tom, in principle, I have no problem with it. I, I do, you know, the, the classic example people quote who don't want to do it, they say, well, you know, what if, you know, there's a, a wealthy spinster living in a big house, you know, with no income, you know, what's going to happen? She's got to be protected. Well, you can always allow for that, can't you? So You absolutely can. They settle that either when they die or when they sell. Yeah, so exactly. there's absolutely no problem with that yeah. objection. I was just thinking whether it's not necessarily just your property ass assets. But assets generally, you know, so sure. if someone has, you know, 20 yeah, million of assets, shares, in addition whatever. to that, you know, take the per one personal residence out, but in addition to that, you know, then there should be a percentage of that that yeah. comes back. In to principle, the I mean, one has to make sure that the admin and cost of collecting it is, you know, because everyone would have to then add up all their assets and liabilities, and I can see that being a bit of a drama. You know, they but, did it but, in the Doomsday Book, didn't they? <laughs> Touche. Touche, yes, quite. No, I'm open minded. Open minded. Let me tell you, I'm a great believer in life of going for the low hanging fruit. And my 10 is just, uh, they're in, you know, incontrovertible, if that's the word. Well, it could be done tomorrow. They you could know, be done the, really the, easily. That, that really is the easy. thing. And yours, yes, that would be maybe the next stage. I have no problem with that. But I no. know these are absolutely practical things that me, as a layperson who's not an expert, thinks bleeding obvious. Why aren't we doing them? potentially taxable wealth that's leaving the country when it should actually be here. Okay, so the whole point of the, you know, the tax code and investing more in HMRC is to go, so the tax gap is an area very close to my heart. Now the revenue, you know, declare their shortfall as 30, 35 billion a year. Well, let's, let's I mean, you can imagine they always are on the side of caution because it's their own, they should be collecting that money, number one. Number two, there's several important things they don't include. They don't include profit shifting because they say that's technically legal and that's not their problem. So the inner revenue don't count uh, profit shifting. They don't count 
are taking advantage of loopholes, which are technically legal, but we all know they're taking them, Michael, and they don't include what they don't know because they don't know it. So one thing that I think is very important for tax watch to do is set up an academic panel of the great and the good to try and quantify as accurately as possible what the tax gap actually is. Because only that which we're doing, we've got nine people so far on this panel, we can then go to government of the day, whichever government it is, and say, look, we have proof here this money is going astray. You've got to do something about it. Now, when you remember that the entire prison service costs just under three billion a year to run, and it's absolutely bursting at the seams and the most embarrassing disgrace, uh, one of the most terrible things in our society, in my opinion, along with other parts of the criminal justice system. So, you know, if we're talking about 30, 50, 100 billion, of clawing that back with a vengeance from these guys. You know, we could do so much good in society if we got that money in. And the other thing is, the good guys who pay tax, you know, I don't mind paying my way. What really annoys me is these guys getting away with it. Mm. I don't like waste either, government waste. That's another talk we can do. But it really annoys me that people aren't paying their way. We all hate people pushing in the queue, don't we? And that's what they're doing. People who can afford it or have a certain amount of wealth, you know, they're not going to write a cheque to the government, oh, I'm going to give you a bit more. And the reason, no. and then if you talk about the fact, Why well, should they? we need to increase this, this ta yeah. taxes, the big argument comes back, uh, the government mismanage it, so they don't really want to well, do it. Okay. Now, if we could overcome that, okay. the mismanagement and the black holes to which it yeah. goes in, we make might make some place. progress. So, like, so if wealth tax, if a tax on wealth went to fund education and health, which keeps the wealth, the workers educated and healthy, yeah. it be might be sellable. Yeah. So, can I say a couple of things about that, if I may? So first of all, if we claw back the tax gap money, the good guys don't have to pay any more tax because that would make such a difference anyway. So I'm saying, yeah, I'll pay more income tax, I'll pay more corporation tax, I'll pay more capital gains tax, but only once you've clawed back this money because it's outrageous. We're already paying miles more than them. So I think we'd all be a lot happier paying tax if they weren't getting away with murder. That's the first thing. Government waste, you've got to be a bit careful because your, you know, your view of Trident might be very different to your, your missus' view, and that's a matter of subjectivity, but there have been some embarrassing wastes of money. I mean, HS2, I'm convinced, is an absolute mad, madly wasteful project. Hinkley Point was a disgrace, in my opinion. The National Audit Office, two weeks after it was signed, said this was a, a not a good use of public funds. At 92.50 we paid for megawatt hour, when we're, we're paying under 40 quid for wind, for wind power, which is where well, I'd rather have a windmill near within a I mean, nuclear power station, thank you very much. And they've estimated, if you go on the Wikipedia page for Hinkley Point, they've estimated that it's going to cost them 20 billion to build Hinkley Point and they're going to make 50 billion profit. Now, why isn't the state making that 50 billion? You know, if we need capital projects to provide jobs, which I understand, you know, why don't we build 3 million homes for social housing and provide jobs that we desperately jobs that we really use for, apprenticeships, teaching people skills, building homes and improving society rather than investing in these mad projects, in my opinion. Right, boss? Thanks so much for that, Julian. Really appreciate your time and your thoughts. Makes good sense to me. Now, if you'd like to find out more about TaxWatch, go to taxwatchuk.org. If you want to find out more about Richer Sounds, go to richersounds.com. So let us know what you think. You can contact us via our website, realagenda.org. We'd love to hear from you. If you enjoy our shows, tell your friends and also give us a review with your podcast provider. And particularly with this series, Profit for Purpose, we really like to hear what your thoughts are and how we can create a, an economy that works for all. What's up next on The Real Agenda? Well, in our Profit for Purpose series, look out for episode three in this three-part special with Julian Richer, where we talk about how being good is good for business. So you can subscribe with your podcast provider and be notified when a new episode is available. Then every Friday we bring you the weekly wake up where our studio guests talk about how some of the real agenda issues that need to be fixed can be fixed. A special thanks to our sponsors, the Reverse Media Group, one of the fastest growing search and media companies. Find out why at reversemediagroup.com. And don't just take our word for it, Reverse Media Group was just listed as the ninth fastest growing private tech company in the UK. One thing is certain, people want to see change to a more compassionate and just society, as well as more courageous politicians prepared to do the right thing for people over party. It's urgent, and it's up to us to make it happen. That's the real agenda. I'm Tom Burgess, thank you for listening, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.